Good evening. Um, it's six o'clock in Perth and eight o'clock in the Eastern States. My name is Garth Davis from uh, the founder and CEO of Property Powerhouse. Really excited to welcome you all onto our webinar this evening. Uh, this evening's webinar all around uh, what's happening in the rental market around the country. Uh, the first time we've had more than one uh, state represented. So I'm really, really excited tonight to be presenting uh, these wonderful expert property managers from uh, around the country and um, just opening up the screen there. So the order that we're going to go in this evening, the first uh, person that will be speaking this evening will be Hayley Mitchell. She hails from Melbourne. So good evening. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Then we will go to Mareka Walker, who will be representing the Sydney market. Good evening, everybody. And then we'll be going to Samara Bedwell, um, who some of you know from the Brisbane market. All right, we'll get it to unmute. Just unmute. We'd love to hear your, your voice. Hello, everybody. Rookie error. <laughs> I'm not a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Samara. And then we'll be going to finally to Jamie Horner in representing Perth this evening. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So, uh, Thank you very much. And then we will just get on to the main slides now. I'm just going to bring those up for you. All right. And then we're going to go through to the first slide. Um, so we'll get cracking because we've got inf information packed evening for you. Um, just a quick disclaimer there. So obviously the information tonight is general in nature and um, you will need to consult each of these individual property managers for your own individual property, rents, vacancies, etc. But um, Hold on to your uh, seats. You're going to have some great information this evening. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about ourselves, so Property Powerhouse. So we are the experts in investment property. And what we do is we provide education, we provide support, experience, and we enable mum and dad investors to buy properties all around Australia, uh, help them build up their wealth, enabling them to retire debt-free, which is really important, and also create the multiple uh, passive rental income streams. The uh, What works really well with uh, Property Powerhouse is with our wonderful network of uh, partners um, in different industries, whether they be the finance broker, uh, preferred uh, referral partners or partners, uh, whether it be the property managers, whether it be the settlement conveyances. But here's an example of how well Property Powerhouse works throughout the country. So in that picture, actually second from the right is Samara, one of our guest speakers this evening. Um, the lady and the gentleman in the middle, that's uh, Cecilia um, Gambo from Melbourne, uh, one of our clients who, who bought um, up in Brisbane. But there we have a case where the, uh, the clients are living in Melbourne, the uh, property consultant, which was me in this case, was living in Perth, our wonderful finance broker partners, uh, uh, Go Loans in, in Adelaide were the finance broker. The property was in Strathpine in Brisbane and the uh, tour guide who um, was Christina would come up from the Gold Coast. And just what was so wonderful here was the um, that we could work all these uh, partners coming together to create a wonderful result for, uh, for um, Cecilia uh, to, to purchase this property. Uh, also property valued on the money and also had a tenant within two days after settlement. So we're very proud of the networks that we've built up over many years. And this evening you'll be uh, listening to four of the experts in the property management uh, around the country. So yeah, just a bit of background on property powerhouse, what we do and uh, the benefits of, of working and the power of property powerhouse. So I'm going to take you into our first presenter now, and that is going to be Hayley Mitchell. So just a bit of background for you on Hayley. So Hayley is the director of Mitchell Training, uh, property training in Melbourne. She started in real estate in 1999 and has built up a successful career working in all facets of property management, including owning her own business. She is fully licensed real estate agent and has won numerous awards, including the Real Estate Institute of Victoria, property manager of the year twice, which is fantastic and was named one of the elite agents top 50 in industry influencers in 2019, 2018 and 2019. So 
Over to you, Haley. What's been happening down in that Melbourne market? If you could let us know. Thank you. Well, what hasn't been happening? It's um, been fun times in Melbourne, and, and I'm sure all the other states are, are feeling pretty lucky right now as we're in our various stages of COVID and lockdown. Um, but a little bit about me. I am I'll, I'm Director of Geelong PM. Just go back one, Garth, if you can. Um, so I am the Director of Geelong Property Managers. I'm also a partner in a business called Reside, which does the other side of Melbourne. Um, I've got Mitchell Property Training and my husband's got a um, tech business as well. So we're kind of spread across a few businesses at the moment. Uh, so you can go to the next one and it might make a little bit more sense. Um, so I am in Victoria and I've put up a little map as well of, of kind of the area that we cover. So for those that don't know Vic, um, I'm based in Geelong and I live in Geelong and that's where our rent roll is. Uh, but we do have property at the rent roll in Melbourne as well. So we're pretty much spread out between that Geelong, Melbourne, and we do go out as far as Lilydale, surprisingly enough, um, with our Melbourne rent roll. So we do look after a big spread of properties. Um, and if we ever want to go over to Mornington Peninsula, we can get a ferry. So that works quite well as well. But we do, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of the areas in Melbourne and particularly those growth areas in Melbourne as well. Um, so next slide. So I'll give you an idea of the uh, Melbourne and regional stats. So this was from the RERV data. And obviously at the moment with COVID, things are changing rapidly. And I just want you to be clear that regional is very different to Melbourne and Metro at the moment. So regional areas are, I want to say, pretty much unaffected by everything that's going on. And an example of that is we manage just under 250 properties and we've got three tenants on rent relief at the moment. So the vast majority of our tenants are really unaffected, which has been great. I know a friend of mine's got a Melbourne rent roll. He's got 450 properties under management and he's got over 100 tenants who are currently on rent relief. So the inner area of Melbourne has been affected significantly depending on where the properties are situated as well. Um, but regional is pretty good and a lot of the out of suburbs are quite good as well. It's just that real ingrained area really close to Melbourne. So the proportion of vacant properties obviously has increased again for Metro. So they're sitting at about 3% and that's still not terrible, um, but regional actually dropped down to 1.8. And one of the interesting things is a lot of people are moving to regional from Metro at the moment because you can pay 500 bucks a week in Melbourne and get an apartment or you can pay $500 a week in Geelong and get a beautiful house. <laughs> so, and because people aren't traveling to work as much, we're finding that they're happier to just live in a, a different area. So I think that's one of the things that's really pushed our regional market at the moment. Uh, the weekly median rent for houses in Metro Melbourne did rise to 473 and the weekly median rent for houses remained at 350 in regional Victoria. Um, I think 350 is quite low, um, particularly in our market. We're probably up around that 4, 450 mark in the area we're working. Next slide. So what's currently happening? Stage four restrictions in Victoria. And uh, what that means is real estate offices are closed. So all staff have to work from home. Uh, no properties are allowed to be sold or leased unless it's done virtually. Agents can still attend to ingoing and outgoing inspections and can, can still attend to settlement functions as well. So if you've bought a property and it's waiting settlement, we can still facilitate that. Retail's closed except online. There are a few exceptions like supermarkets, pharmacies, um, curfew between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. So everyone's got to be locked in their house during that period of time. Exercise for an hour today. Now, does anyone want to move to Vic? Is everyone excited about what I'm telling you? Um, Childcare's closed and all school children are being homeschooled. You can't go more than five k's from your home unless you have a work permit. And when you leave your home, you have to wear a mask. So that's stage four metro. I'm in stage three, which is regional. I actually make the cutoff by one kilometre where I live. So if I go a kilometre down the road, I live in a 
place called Little River. Um, and the river is our cutoff and it's one kilometre away. So we're currently in stage three. It means that if you can work from home, you should. So they're trying to really um, make people work from home as much as possible. Offices can be open, but with skeleton staff or by appointment only. Private inspections only for sale or lease, and it's only one at a time. Um, I'll just get you to go back one. Garth, you flicked forward on me. Um, food outlets are takeaway only. You can't have anyone at your home. Uh, if you exercise, you can do so as one other person, not part of your family unit. All school children are being homeschooled at the moment, which is just joyous. I've got a six year old, <laughs> I'm being homeschooled. And when you leave home, you have to wear a mask. Uh, the restrictions are in place until mid-September at this stage. We'll go forward one. Um, so recent stats of Geelong. We've got something called a Matterport camera, which is really important. And I know a lot of people are really utilising technology, particularly in COVID at the moment. Um, we've got 94 spaces currently hosted. In the last 18 months, we've had 26,800 impressions and 12,500 unique visits. So that's massive. And it means that we can effectively show properties still without having to physically go there. Um, realestate.com.au, so our properties are on market for an average of 26 days compared to our competitors who are sitting at about that 35 day mark. Um, from the 19th of J July to the 17th of August, properties had a total of 122,000 views, 59,000 page engagements, 428 inquiries and 611 saves and shares. So I'm showing you these stats to show that the market's still really strong. And you'll find that this is the same in Melbourne, in outer areas, Melbourne inner, where you've got sort of docklands and all those high rise, they're the ones that are struggling. Um, and we have had 72 applications submitted in the last month, which is huge as well. Next slide. Um, so regional properties are moving really, really well. Lots of quality applicants. And we're finding that people are moving from that metro area out. There has been a slight glut of high rise apartments in the Geelong area at the moment um, because a lot have settled this year and also there is a lack of students looking to rent, okay, because students are not around at the moment, particularly internationals. Uh, Metro Melbourne, certain areas such as inner city and apartment living are really affected from COVID. So lots of rent relief, reduced rents and vacancy. But remember guys, this is short term. And what it's going to do, it will cause people to sell. So there will be a lot of really good buyers on the market because people will need to move them. Outer areas in, in particular, houses are still strong, family property is still great as well. Um, and a friend of mine gave me an example, so I thought I'd give it to you. Uh, property in Docklands is getting $700, $760 a week last year. Um, it's now been vacant three months. They've dropped it down to 450 and it's still sitting vacant. So that's what I'm talking about with those high rise in Docklands apartments. It's a real struggle for a lot of people. Next slide. Um, Residential Tenancies Act changes. So right in the middle of all of COVID, we're super excited about that. We've got 130 changes coming to the Residential Tenancies Act and they were meant to be in place by the 1st of July, 2020. They have been pushed out no later than the 1st of January, 2021. A couple of those things is pets are now allowed in rented premises. Um, in order to say no to a pet, you have to go to VCAT to get VCAT to say no. So you can't just say, I don't want a dog in my property. You actually have to get an order from VCAT to say the dog's not allowed. Um, there's changes to our options to evict tenants. So we're losing what's called 120 day no reason notice. Um, and our end of fixed term tenancy notices will be restricted to the end of lease term only. So you're going to have to really decide if you want to keep your tenants past that first term because if you're thinking oh they're not so good get rid of them move them on because once you go past that first term it's harder to get them out it's not impossible but it is harder we can only increase rents every 12 months there's minimum standards for rental properties as well such as heating locks window furnishings kitchen and bathroom facilities um, tenants will be allowed to make prescribed modifications without consent and there's a heap more coming as well. So there's some of the things that are on our very short horizon <laughs> that we're also looking forward to um, and that could push out again past the 1st of January. It might, um, REIV at the moment is trying to get it in place for the 1st of July just to buy us a little bit more time. That's it for me. 
Have you got questions? Well, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. And if anybody joined late, we are we have started with Hayley Mitchell uh, talking on Melbourne, and we will be going to uh, Marake um, shortly on the Sydney market. But yeah, I think um, what we what we got a, uh, some information really loud and clear there was the inner city, and there was a very big drop there in the Docklands, but they, there's very tall buildings there with a lot of supply. So. Um, have, um, and, and just to reinforce, I, I think you, you have mentioned it, but this is, this is something that is really important to investors. So in the Melbourne market and in the rentals you control, um, how, many, how many managements did you have and how many tenants are behind in rent or not paying their rent? So we're very conscious about the, obviously the rental side of the business that has been a property investor. Yeah, so we don't have any tenants that are in severe rent at the moment at all. We managed to just under 250 managements and we only have three tenants which are on an agreed rent relief program, meaning that the owners agreed to reduce their rent for a certain period of time. So three out of 250 is not very much. That's actually a fantastic uh, result. And this will be a theme for all our uh, attendees listening tonight. Uh, these four property managers uh, are very, very thorough when they take on the tenant um, and they do their due diligence for absolute times like this when things get a little bit tough. Um, mm. You've got to make sure that you've really done all your, your, um, your checks and balances on the, on the, um, on the tenants. Um, another one that I wanted to ask you about is what have you been seeing happening with investors like ourselves? Have you found in those uh, Melbourne markets, uh, have, have tenants been, um, been offloading any properties? Have they... Have they been selling um, um, properties in this market or are they sitting tight for the long term? Yeah, um, I think most landlords are, are holding for now, particularly in Melbourne, it's very hard to sell because you've got to do it virtually and not a lot of people will want to buy virtually. So I, I see next year probably is the big opportunity um, when a lot of landlords will go, do you know what, it's just been too hard. We've got the changes to the RTA now as well, and it's time to offload. I, I think that you would have to be in a pretty significant place to go, yep, I'm going to sell it right now. Um, we are seeing quite a few off-market deals though. So quite a lot of, uh, you know, buyers, agents and, and people like you are picking up some really good off-market deals at the moment, which is, which is, in, they're not hitting the normal markets that they normally would. Yep, and that's that's where we like to um, do our researches in the off market. Absolutely. Um, and there are some good opportunities at the moment. Um, that's great. Um, for the attendees, please know that there is a, there should be a little uh, opportunity there called Q and A. You can um, type in any question that you would like. Um, try and address it to which speaker. So if you don't know. Uh, their name, but it is up on the screen. Just say, so uh, start off with whether it's a Melbourne or Sydney or Perth and Brisbane. So, thank you very much, Hayley. That was excellent. No and problem. Thank you very much for that. We're going to go now to Mareka. Uh, Mareka Walker is the operations uh, specialist at Taylor's Property Management Specialist in Sydney. So, uh, Mareka's role as operations specialist has grown to encompass business development with a focus on ensuring all new clients receive the best experience possible and positive results for the investment properties throughout the relationship with Tyler. So good evening to you, uh, Mareka. And what can you tell us uh, what's been happening in the Sydney market? Thank you very much, Garth. Um, if you could change the slide, that would be fabulous. Okay, um, so to start with and give you all a bit of an overview, we're a third generation family business that has been in real estate for over 90 years. Our current principal, Mark Taylor, took his passion for property management and made it our sole focus back in 1996. And since then, we have stayed true to our vision to become the leading provider of property management in Sydney's East. Our next slide, please, Gail. Thank you. So we look um, after around 900 residential properties for over 700 landlords with 90% of those properties in Sydney's east. So this includes the eastern suburb beaches, like the iconic Bondi, I'm sure you've all heard of, university suburbs, including Kensington and Kingsford, um, suburbs close to the city centre with an urban edge, like Surrey Hills and Paddington, Ramwick, the home of the famous racetrack, 
and leave these suburbs, including Centennial Park and Mulara. It's an exciting place to be with a great mix of suburbs and a fantastic collection of investment properties from studio apartments to large family homes in one of Sydney's highest density rental markets. Next slide, please, Gar. Okay, so in terms of a point of difference, which is both at the core of our values and what we do is looking after clients. So as I've heard Mark Taylor often say, our business is not about property, it's about people. So, and it's that value around putting our landlords and tenants as our focus and taking a proactive solution focused approach that is seeing us achieve positive results in the current Sydney market. Next slide, please. So when COVID-19 first impacted the market, things were really tough for landlords and tenants. April was incredibly quiet. We only leased a couple of properties and vacancy rates were high. Traditional university suburbs like Kensington and Kingsford were hit hard as international students were not returning from abroad and students were studying online from home rather than living near and studying on campus. We had tenants who had never had issues with job security finding themselves out of work, not able to pay rent and in some cases leaving to move back home, whether that was in Sydney or elsewhere. Landlords who had had a steady income from their investment properties were suddenly faced with decreasing the rent, not only to help the tenant in financial crisis, but to avoid the other serious major issue and that was a vacant property on the market for an extended period of time that would not achieve the rent they were getting back as early as March last year. Next slide, please, Gar. So home opens could only be shown to individuals once the property was vacant, make it even um, more challenging to lease properties. So rental income began to fall and unfortunately it's still continuing to do so today. The cycle created by COVID-19 has seen rents in Sydney's east fall between 15 and 30%. The residential vacancy rate published by um, the Real Estate Institute of New South Wales, which you can see on your screen now for Sydney, shows an increase in vacancies from 3% in March pre-COVID-19 this year to 4.5% in June and a further increase in July to 5%. In the inner part of Sydney, of which the demographic we look after is included, we saw an increase in vacancy rates from 2.5% in March to 5.8% in June and remaining above 5% in July, some of the highest vacancy rates we've ever seen. Next slide, please. Understandably, it does mean it's a tenant's market at the moment. In other words, tenants are gold. It is very important to focus on finding good ones and putting them into investment properties on a 12-month lease to ride out the COVID storm and get you into 2021. In a falling market like the one we are now in Sydney, the goal is not to achieve better rental yields, but to get your investment property leased. That is the focus at the moment for us with our clients. And I'm going to share with you three ways to do this. Uh, next slide, please, Gar. I think we've missed a slide somewhere along the line, actually. Could you go back one more? Yeah, so let's have a look. That's the one. Okay, we'll come back to the stats in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the three Ps that will really help you at the moment in the market that, with the challenges in Sydney. So ensure your property is being presented in the best light possible. Clean, tidy, repairs and maintenance undertaken, good condition of the carpet and paint, etc. Number two, market it correctly have professional photography and copy and target the best market for your property. And number three, price it right. Be realistic about the current market, the vacancy rates and pricing it competitively to get it leased. Okay, let's go to the stats now, Garth. Okay, 
we know this is working because we are leasing property. Our vacancy rates are around two and a half percent, about half the market average. So considering we've got around 900 properties we look after, there's only about 23 at the moment that are vacant. Um, and according to the stats that you can all see from Domain in July this year, our listings are having double the number of views, engagements, inquiries, shares and saves compared to the market average. Okay, next slide please, thanks Gunnar. So in summary, by holding on to current tenants and reducing the rent for those in crisis, and by being realistic and strategic with the marketing of vacant properties to get them leased with good tenants, we have seen all of our landlords being able to hold on to their investment properties. So if you have made the decision to invest in Sydney, all you need to do is be mindful of extended vacancy, that rents may be 15 to 25% less than what you were expecting to receive, and get an experienced property manager on your side that you can trust. Thanks, Gar. Thanks, everyone. Now that's um, really interesting. Thanks, Mareka. So just towards the tail end there, you were talking about potentially some um, having to make some quite significant uh, adjustments on price to rent. Do you think that is a temporary measure? Do you think that um, that may be, uh, I sit you as an investor and, you know, as you plan your cash flows, may that be like, do you think like a, a sort of 12 month plan and hopefully as those students come back um, and things go a bit more normal, those vacancies, um, demand will pick up and rents can start picking up again? It all depends on what's happening with COVID-19. The, the thing is that you don't know from week to week at the moment what's going to happen, what new outbreaks may happen, what government decisions may be. I mean, you take a look at the moment at what's happening, for example, with sport in New South Wales, and they're now looking at restrictions based on the region that you're in. So it's very hard to project when you're in very uncertain times. Yep. So we don't think we've hit in New South Wales yet the bottom of where we're going because we just don't know. You look at what's just happened to Haley and everybody in Victoria all of a sudden being closed down again. So I think just be, being conservative, um, just being realistic and, and just not having high expectations. But that said, there are people out there at the moment looking for property. We're getting good numbers at the opens that we're doing. But being mindful, it's not a new influx of a market coming in at the moment. It's people who are in Sydney now looking for new opportunity. Yeah, okay, that's really good. Um, and what are you seeing happening from a landlord's perspective? So are most of the landlords um, taking a long-term view to just sit tight and hold? Or are you finding that there may be a, a particular trend of, of uh, investors that are, are starting to sell or... Um, anything like that? Yeah, look, Garth, like I mentioned earlier, um, the landlords that we've got at the moment, none of them have needed to sell. They've needed to make hard decisions. They've needed to be realistic about the market that we're in now. And when you look at some of the investors that we've had for, for decades, it's a really new situation for them and for a lot of people to be in right now. But if, if when the market is falling, if you can get underneath and be strong, and present your property well and know that you are the one needing to sell yourself to the tenants right now if you play your cards right we've got people having success with the leasing of their property all right well that's uh, fantastic thank you very much uh, Mareka. very interesting to hear what's going on um, so thank you. Um, thank you we're going to now introduce Samara Bedwell managing director of Macwell property management uh, Samara is the managing director there and has 18 years experience in the industry. During her career, she has won many national and state industry awards. Highly regarded as an industry expert in Queensland, Samara has written several key articles for industry publication and newspapers. She is known for her exceeding expectations in customer service and believes in employing staff with a positive, hard working attitude. And um, I've been working with Samara probably now as a preferred property a manager partner for about 15 years. She does a wonderful job and there's quite a few attendees this evening that have Samara as their property manager and a couple that will be 
um, coming on stream. So, Samara, what can you tell us about what's been happening in the in the market in Brisbane? Thanks, Garth. Um, hi, everybody. I've got myself unmuted, so we're right now. Um, look, in Queensland, um, we're still very much riding through the storm, as every other state is, but I think we're actually um, really quite positive. So I'll get you to flick slides for me, Garth, and um, I guess with Brisbane and Queensland, we've always sort of um, marched along to the beat of our own drum. During this COVID um, pandemic, our state governments really held firm, um, particularly in the early terms with the border closure. And whilst a lot of people were opposed um, of it due to business and, and um, incomes and jobs and things like that, I really think that potentially this has maybe allowed us to be a little bit um, of in our own bubble. And so we're moving forward still quite well. We've got some great stimulants in the housing sector from our, our um, state government as well. And I think over time and in the past few years, Queensland's been sort of known as the poorer cousin to the likes of Sydney and Melbourne because we know that Sydney and Melbourne really had some really accelerated growth over the last few years um, and Brisbane didn't um, grow at such a rapid speed and we sort of had this conservative look. Um, a lot of people talk about Brisbane as a, a country town compared to the other capital cities. And I'm okay with that. I'm from the bush originally anyway. But um, I think our conservative pace and how we've actually been tracking over the last few years has actually kept us really um, in check during this pandemic and it's, it's allowed us to be sustainable. So I'll um, try and be as brief and um, to the point as I can tonight, guys. Um, most of the slides that I've got come from um, the REIQ, Real Estate, of in, uh, Real, Real Estate Institute of Queensland, and um, they produce a market monitor. This is a quarterly publication, and you guys can, in fact, jump onto their website and subscribe to this quarterly publication. It, it is a, a cost, but it's not a significant cost, um, and it has stats for right across Queensland, um, regional areas, the whole work. So this was actually taken from the March um, edition. And what you can see here is units and housing. And if we're having a look, it's sort of like a property clock, but if you have a look here, um, you can see that the Greater Brisbane and Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast areas um, have all held really, really steady, um, which is fantastic um, because there could have potentially been a huge slide um, given that our housing minister back in early days in April announced that tenants may not have to pay rent at all. Obviously we rallied and we, we fought very hard to ensure that that didn't happen. Um, I'm very proud of our REIQ um, here because they did stand up against that and we got um, some really um, good outcomes there. So um, we are holding steady. I'll get you to move forward to the next slide, Garth, and we'll have a look at some vacancy rates. So this is now moving forward to our last June quarter. Um, so you can see here, right down the side column, um, it talks about tight, healthy, weak, etc. And you can see right across the board that we've held our vacancy rates around that 2% and less mark, which is exceptional. Prior to COVID, our Brisbane city market, our CBD market was higher than that. Um, because we'd had an influx of development in the city in, in units. And so we were having these uh, uh, vacancy issues in a city. Um, but now moving through COVID, everything is tightening up, which is fantastic. And we've got less than 2% vacancy pretty much across the board. So it's working very, very well for us. If, I, if you can say a pandemic can work well. <laughs> Let's have a look at sales figures now. When Macwell opened back in 2015, we opened just as a property management only business. And just shy of two years ago, um, I brought my husband over to the dark side to work with me. He's been in sales for the best part of oh, 10, 11 years. Um, but he was working obviously in other real estate agencies. And we've become a, a, a full agency that services both sales and property management because we had the desire and the request from some of our landlord clients that were uh, turning out, I guess, ready to their property and they still wanted to deal with us. 
and my husband's pretty good at his job. So whilst we had this big prediction um, early in 2020 and late 2019 from some property commentators that Queensland was set for the exponential growth, obviously that didn't happen. But what I can tell you is in the first quarter of the year, um, our sales figures were phenomenal. COVID hit, so that, that next March sort of quarter, things got quiet, but to be honest, it got quiet because we had to move and we had to adapt in ways of, of how we were selling. We had to go into virtual inspections, as the other ladies were talking about. We had to move the way in which we got people through properties. And so we have um, the same sort of thing as Hayley was talking about, the Matterport, where people can virtually look through properties and then one-on-one -on -one inspections. And what we found during this whole time is that the days on market become a lot shorter. Um, and that the prices only moved a fraction. So there wasn't anything to really be worried about. Um, I guess in layman's term, this pandemic got rid of a lot of tire kickers. So the sales turnover process has been really, really enjoyable for the vendors and for us as agents and for the buyers. It's, it's a very clean um, process. In fact, if we look back over the last five years of our sales stats, you'll notice that we've had really steady um, growth across the board. So very um, minor ups and downs, no, no huge peaks or troughs. And so I really think that we've, we've got the great market, uh, the greatest market for long term investment opportunities. Those who can see opportunities to park some cash um, into property here because we are more conservative and, and just got that more steady pace. Um, and that to me offers a level of comfort, I guess. So I'll get you to flick over to the next slide for me. Um, with coronavirus, obviously um, I would not like to be in politics right now trying to make the decisions about what's going on, whatever you, your preferences are, who you like, who you don't like, and what decisions you're opposing, etc. That's not for me to say, but what I can talk about is what some of the decisions have done here with tenants. So um, I guess our lower income earners that were already on subsidies such as um, the, it wasn't called Job Seeker then, but I guess um, the Centrelink benefit sort of recipient tenant, um, they were already paying rent. They got, I guess, more of a bonus. And so they have been least affected here. And what we're seeing is that the agencies and good agencies are making sure that we're not allowing those tenants to move from what they were affording pre-COVID into more higher priced property because that's a false income. So we've got to be smart about how we're processing applications and understanding that the income that they're receiving now as a subsidy isn't long term. We know the government cannot keep handing out these extra bonuses. So um, making sure that we've kept these tenants in this place so when those subsidies stop, they're still affording their, their properties that they were currently in. Hence why there's not that, um, not the vacancy rate that was first expected, I, I think. I think those that were, who have become new to job seeker during the pandemic. So those that were working couldn't for whatever reason uh, be on job keeper. Um, and so now they are looking for new uh, ways to bring income into their family have actually shown us some great signs of being proactive. Like Hayley said, some of um, the people in Melbourne and what they're doing here in Brisbane as well is they're moving location. So they're, they're becoming proactive and they're saying, well, whilst I'm still might be looking for a career opportunity change, I can also make myself uh, more affordably comfortable by moving to a cheaper suburb having maybe more bang for buck in a different style of property and work from home or create um, online businesses um, or bring families back together. So we are seeing um, people be really proactive and so this is helping the recovery um, that COVID had. And to be honest, we aren't really recovering too much here in Queensland because it hasn't hurt us significantly. Um, so I'll get you to, to skip on for me. 
Basically guys, we have seen our tightest vacancy rates here in Queensland um, in a very, very long time. Um, we actually have our lowest arrears rates also that we've had. Um, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna hold it up. Can you see the orange ones? There's five of them there. Those orange ones mean that I have five tenants just one day in arrears at the moment. Um, and that could be that they've paid today and we're gonna see it tomorrow, so to speak. So um, when you've got tight arrears, tight vacancy rates, um, this is good for business. This is good for the investor. Um, and we're still maximizing returns for our clients. So whilst we've never really had huge jumps since, since probably 2007, 2008 with you know, significant rent increases, we are still in most areas increasing rent to a slight degree. Um, so it is very much the land of opportunity here in Queensland. All right, change slide. Yeah, that's all. That's all from me. So I um, just wanted to ask, there were a couple of suburbs and specifically I wanted just to maybe to try and address that. We've, got a, we've had some quite strong interest coming out of Strathpine on the northern, uh, northern side, about 24 k's north of Brisbane, also a little bit on the Sunshine Coast and around Park Ridge. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening in some of the areas? And as research, um, I look after the research for property power. So, um, wherever it is around the country, we're making sure that they're close to transport, whether that's a train station, buses, schools, um, you know, hospitals, recreation areas. So what could you comment on those, those, those suburbs, um, Samara? So Strathpine, um, over the last probably year and a half, has been a really top performing suburb for us. Um, so about 65% of our rent roll has been new builds. Um, and our rent roll covers a huge area, Gold Coast, Western suburbs, um, inner city, northern suburbs up as far as Caboolture and, and the Redlands, etc. So um, Strathpine has been a really high performing area um, because of its proximity to everything that you've just said, your trains, your universities, your shopping hubs, great schools, etc. Um, and so anything that we have had there has basically had no more than a five to six day vacancy period. Um, there has been one or two prior to COVID that unfortunately crept up to about seven, eight, nine days vacancy, but that was prior to COVID. Um, we've got nothing vacant in Strathpine at the moment. Um, in fact, we've got one vacant property at the moment. I don't manage on the Sunshine Coast Garth. Um, we've got contacts up there that I would be happy to pass on some details for you. Um, but from the research and the stats that we get here and, and with the REIQ, the Sunshine Coast seems to be holding really steady as well. Um, Park Ridge, I think you mentioned. Um, Park Ridge, again, is a beautiful um, family demographic location. We're seeing some really good results in that area as well. We've got strong demand in that area. So um, I would consider any of those areas quite a decent investment opportunity. And I, I guess I need to reiterate that if you're going into any investment in these, these new, like into these suburbs, they're not, you know, the five second holds and you're gonna walk out with a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar cash. That's not what our market is about. But if you can hold them for a longer period of time, you are going to see um, good return, rental returns, and then um, growth at the end of the day. So um, they're, not, they're not a get rich quick scheme, but they are certainly good long-term investment opportunities. No, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. And you know, that goes hand in hand with our research. We, we look for very low risk uh, opportunities for the clients. Um, and then, you know, the, the whole strategy is a sort of 15 to 20 year hold. Um, we're not looking for those uh, get rich uh, quick schemes. Uh, they're very high risk. They are, you can find areas around the country, normally one industry towns. Um, but when that industry um, goes quiet or shuts down, um, it's, it's a bloodbath and we stay well away from those. We only research in the capital cities, um, like you great property managers here this evening. So thank you, Samara. And um, I'll check if there's any questions that have popped up for, um, 
or Brisbane. But um, finally, I'd like to introduce uh, Jamie Horner here, um, who is in uh, Perth, Western Australia, where I'm, I am this evening. So Jamie is the Director of Empire Property Management in Perth. Um, and uh, she says, how do you become a long-term successful investor that is ready for a life of relaxation? Well, it's all about the team and uh, I can second that. Jamie has helped more than 1,500 owners for more than 20 years acquire, build and hold their properties, um, their property empires through investor-focused property management she does and she also does strata management strategies. With a master's in property, a bachelor of commerce and diploma in property management, Jamie holds a wealth of knowledge and manages the Real Estate Institute of WA Property Management Team of the Year. So you better start with us. Um, start with that. Tell us you're an award winner um, with Rayworth. So, um, and how many, that's, that's a, a very big feather in your cap. It's not something you've won every year. So to have achieved this, um, it's, um, you, I know you were stoked about that, Jen. We were, and of course it happened in COVID. So we of course got the announcement via webinar. So we had our private little party, but we, uh, we did rue the fact that for many years we didn't get it to go up on stage and have a good time. And I must admit, I, uh, I don't know if there'll actually be a national awards next year or they will have one, but where we're going, but yes, thank you. It's uh, greatly appreciated after 20 years. So thank you very much. But um, I must also say to Samara Haley and uh, Marika are amazing property managers on the other side of the country and a hard act to follow. So see how we go. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I did laugh when Samara did talk about, you know, Queensland. I think WA just does what they want when they want. I must admit, you know, we live darkly in the shadows behind Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. Um, I wouldn't quite say that we, we, we would almost be considered a bit of a Canberra and a Tasmania. We definitely do our own thing in Perth. Um, so I'll get you to move on, Garth. I mean, COVID-wise for everyone, if I want to talk about that, um, we haven't been greatly affected. I must admit, you would only know that we're in a COVID situation when you are sitting, you know, a row apart from someone at the football stadium or you're all supposed to be a one and a half meters away at a school drop up or a school pick up. So I must admit here in Perth, we are close to back to normal. We are still under a residential tenancies COVID emergency act, residential and commercial. And I must admit, even though we haven't had community transmission for probably over 120 days, we, that is highly likely to be extended. Um, the state government is probably not extending it under COVID, but probably because of the figures I'm about to give you. Um, they are really worried that on 1 October that there will be a large influx of people having no property and of rents going up. So we have been, we have heard that it's highly likely that it will probably be extended to December, but there'll be sort of two acts running at the same time. So i.e. some people will be under the current act if they are under COVID, if not, they must revert to our existing act prior to COVID. So it's going to be a bit of a tough one for property managers to decide which act we apply, but it is highly likely we will go forward. So talking about Perth, if we have a look at when we talked about rents and dips and growth in 2000, and I've got 2017 there, but if I probably looked at 2017, we had 13,000 available rentals in WA. Now you need about 7,000 for a nice equilibrium. So when we're talking vacancy rates, and I know Mareka talked about theirs getting up to about 5%, we're at about 7.68% in 2015, 2016, 2017. So as you can see, 2017, we were at 17, uh, 7 7.2. So we had double the number of properties available and it was exactly as it said, you had to present well, you had to treat tenants like gold and you had to try to secure it and write it out. What actually happened in 2018 and 2019 is we absorbed all the excess stock and people always say to me, well, geez, was there a large amount of demand that came into Perth? There wasn't. It was just the fact that investors stopped buying and our supply rapidly declined. Demand stayed the same, 
but supply declined. So every single year, we absorbed an extra 3,000 properties and absorbed them. The problem that we have as of 2020, and we actually had in late 2019, is, is that we are now at a level that is unsustainable. So today, they or yesterday, they announced that our vacancy rate is actually 1.6%. I did this on Monday, and we we're at 2%, and our stats have come out to be adjusted for August slash July, and we're at 1.6%. So in Perth, that actually means it's not sustainable. Um, we have like uh, over a thousand inquiries for 10 properties. It is, it is quite ridiculous. Um, so when you look at our house rents, our medium house rents have gone up as you can see, but not considerably. They are the next things that are due to go up. And I'm not talking $10 or $20, we're talking 20, 30, 40, $50. The issue we have at the moment is, is that we are in a COVID response act, which says we can't increase rents. But if a tenant is vacating and we are releasing that property, we are probably looking at rents 30 to $70 higher. Um, now, the one other issue that I must admit is, is that that does not work for older properties in saturated uh, areas. So I'll talk about the Perth CBD. We had an old property on Terrace Road, which is you pretty much sit street front to the water, but it's an older complex, uh, communal laundry, um, you know, parking, one bay, potentially communal, that has been very hard to rent. So this, the people still want new, modern, well presented, but we are at that stage now where we are getting a large number of inquiries. So 3,362 at the start of this week is half of what we need in WA to be sustainable. So as it says there, Perth requires at least 6,000 to 7,000 properties. So we are looking at rent increases and a move in rent as soon as we move out of our COVID period. I'll get you to switch to the next one, Garth. Okay, so again, sourced from Rewa. I think we all enjoy using our industry bodies for the best information. As you can see in Perth, we have stagnated for a long time as we absorb those extra properties. There'll actually be, when you see the June figures, a slight, uh, what you'd probably say is a line going straight again across. It's probably the effects of COVID just holding us up a little bit again in that April, May, June. So when you actually add April, May and Junes, if you look at Rewa stats, you'll see that they did a straight line again. And it's because we obviously had that COVID Act come in and trying to move people through properties was really hard. So we are picked, we are pipped to obviously increase our rents. But something that people have to understand is, is that we are 30% off the rent that we were achieving in 2014. So the average rent in Perth is 350 and 375, depending if it's a house or a unit. Those prices were 480 and 460 five years ago. So I know people are saying, well, look, you know, 20, 30 dollar increases are quite big. They're still probably considerably off where we were five years ago. On to the next slide. Okay, so these are just some raw stats straight off our leasing. So if we looked at the last 30 days, and this 30 days probably we're in August now, happened in June, July. So for the stats that you're looking at, we had 15 properties advertised. This time last year, I had 30 properties advertised. So I'm already down to half. And even today, I think I've got five properties advertised. So over the last two months, it's gotten worse. And we manage over 550 houses. So to have five properties on our rental list is extremely low. But what we are averaging is 10 applications per property and probably anywhere from 18 to 30 people through a property at the moment. Um, the hard thing is, is that tenants have gotten to a desperate stage already, but because we've had a lack of media information and all those sort of things, they actually just think they're getting rejected on to who knows what basis. They're not realizing in WA that in the last two months, we've had a massive shift and we're pretty much at a level that we can't sustain. Um, next slide, Garth. So if you're looking at a map of Perth, and I've actually taken the Rewa map, which actually has suburb, suburb average prices. So when you look to the left and you see that red, that's our Western suburbs. So our Western suburbs are our most probably affluent suburbs. And the price in those areas is above 1.2 million on average. And you'll see why. 
coastal and river. So if Perth's right in the middle there, they're not far from Perth. Not only do they border our coastline, but they also border along our river. Then you've got the orange suburbs. Now your orange suburbs are your just underneath, so you're 800,000 plus. Great to pick up an investment property in there because they still are close to great schools, the river and the CBD. The next line that I really, really want our owners to look at is those suburbs that are adjacent to those orange ones and those blue ones in the middle. So those blue ones just adjacent to Perth to the east are still little hotspots. Um, Burswood Crown sit just a little bit of, of the right. Garth, if I can get your pointer in there, a little bit higher than that. Burswood Crown, the stadium, all of that sits in there. Now, it doesn't necessarily sit directly on the water, but they're the spots that we would look at. The, those places in orange or those places in green or blue are good. And like I said, if you did your mapping on your cash flow right now, on the rent you're getting now, I'd say that your rent will be astronomically different in six to 12 months time. We'll, we'll definitely see 10% increases. A next slide, Garth, that would be great. So I suppose if you were looking at the Perth rental market, I hate to say you could probably have the worst unpresented house at the moment and still lease it, but you would still attract poor quality tenants and none of us agree we would ever take poor quality tenants. So still presentation is important, modern fixtures, modern improvements. It's quite funny, but COVID has highlighted that complexes with communal laundries will no longer do. I don't think people want to do anything communally anymore. So we have struggled to lease a couple of properties that have communal laundries. So still huge demand for houses within a 20k CBD radius. Metro and beachside suburbs, absolutely. Older apartments, like I said, do you continue to stagnate? Pet potential is a key factor. I think uh, a lot of the ladies, or Hayley talked about the fact that the laws that they're having in Victoria, ours are currently under review to be put in place in, in about one and a half to two years time. We won't, again, we'll be very similar. You'll have to have pets. So pet potential is a key factor. And just remember that about 73% of the Australian population have a pet. So I don't think as an investor, you necessarily want to outrule pets and I have three boys so I can tell you that a pet does a lot less mess than what three boys do. You don't walk in and see pink nail polish on the carpet or anything like that. So I think investors have to get their head around pets because they're a way of life. I think the stats have gotten even higher on pet ownership in Australia since COVID. In WA, it's proximity to education. So we get a lot of people coming in from the Eastern states, or sorry, even not even Eastern states, but from the Asian area because of our schools. So proximity to great education is important. Um, we have some great new colleges like Bob Hawke and Subiaco, and they're going to be big suburbs to have a look into. Um, just got the released amounts from the REA search results and the search results in Brisbane and Perth have gone over through the roof from the Asian countries. Uh, you're looking at the US. So they are interesting too, that they're also looking in coastal suburbs. So um, I would probably put my hat on probably looking in those sort of areas. With WA, I think the hardest thing that you're gonna find, especially when you look at REA, is, is that in WA, we're a country, we're a little area to our own. And as much as people have got still got great sentiment in Sydney, Brisbane and Victoria, there is something about WA. If you look at all the REA uh, research recently, we still have poor sentiment. So the problem with WA is, is that once we get on board, we all jump on board. We're a bit like sheep, but we still are one of those people that sort of wait, wait, wait and need to see it. I do think for Perth owners, they do need to probably get on board soon before it does become crazy because we do have a, an unmanageable vacancy rate at the moment. Perfect. All done. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Jamie, I just wanted to take you back to the map here. Um, I wanted to get your views from a rental perspective about a suburb called Southern River, because we, we do have the Metronet that will be coming across to join yes. Coburn Central. But we have some, um, some investors this evening looking at uh, some house and land packages. Obviously, we've had the double grant here in WA for land, but the 25 federal as well as the state 20. So land has been moving very, very quickly. And they're looking at a couple of opportunities um, down here through Hamlin, who are a very good builder. What are your thoughts on the rental demand down in Southern River? 
Look, those, the Southern River area falls into that blue green area. You've got the, the quality that you get in that area is also the fact that you get a lot of suburban houses. So you'll see that in WA, we will have house prices grow quite quickly and unit prices will take a while because we're still supplying a large number of units. So houses in those suburban areas are a good, are a good choice. That's brilliant, thank you. And I just wanted, there were a couple of questions that came through. I think we've got about, we've got about a minute to go. So I'm just going to ask you, and that's come through for uh, Jamie. Um, so Russ mentioned, Russ is one of our um, uh, investors. Jamie, I heard that a $300 per week property in Perth went up to 450 after a tenant vacated. We also got told that a property for 500 per week uh, went to 760 per week when the tenant left. Would you agree that this is um, uh, typical what might be going on for people? Look, the highest we've done is at about $110, but I must admit, I am saying to the owners, when I get my, um, Hayley talked about Matterport, which obviously is your 3D virtual tours, when I get your tour back and I'm ready to advertise, um, because also too, don't forget that 3D tours are still key. People need to move through properties in that way, um, that I'll discuss it then because I must admit you in WA, when I go to put a property up, there used to be 20 others in that same suburb. Now there's three. You're almost picking a price, telling an owner, try it for a week and see how you go. And you're right. I must admit 110 is the biggest difference we've done in, in a property from, from empty. But I must admit not many tenants are leaving their properties at the moment. They, they gave vacate notice and then they withdrew their vacate notice because they found that they were one of those 10 applicants. All right. Well, there we go. We're one minute past seven. So we're going to wind up there. Look, I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. The information that we got tonight um, with the permission with the presenters, we will send out a PDF. I um, hope they will. Okay. I'll PDF the slides um, and share that as well as a recording. So there will be a YouTube recording uh, for anyone that's missed part of this or wanted to go back and have a listen. Um, I'm extremely grateful to Haley to uh, Mareka, to Samara and Jamie. As you've heard tonight, they're extremely competent and you can hear from the low numbers of vacant properties they've got that they actually are brilliant at what they do and they do the due diligence very, very carefully. And as an investor, if we're gonna hold these properties for 15 to 20 years, we need to make sure that the people that we trust are gonna do a fantastic job. Um, we, we're all busy in our own lives. We, we don't need any stress and, and trauma. What we need is a cool, calm head and stuff's going to come up. And the, the, with these property managers, if something comes up, you just say to them, okay, well, what's your recommendation? You do a bit of your homework and um, you got to trust them to do the right thing. Uh, what was important tonight with this education was really to reinforce that the property market works in cycles. So you may hear generally that the Australian property market is doing this well, you know, I beg to, uh, to, to, to think that's a very poor way to look at the our markets. They are so unique and they're working all at different times. And as a uh, person that helps investors, it's really important to understand what's going on in these own markets. So there'll be times in certain cities when the values are going up and going up really quickly. There'll be other capital cities in the country where those prices and values are going down. And we have all these contrasting um, cycles and the same thing with the rent. So as you've heard tonight, you've heard a couple, a couple of the couple of capital cities, capital, couple of capital cities. <laughs> uh, it's past my bedtime, um, where the rents actually been dropping and dropping quite uh, by quite big percentages. And then you're hearing in other cities where they're going up uh, quite uh, substantially on the on the, due to a shortage of supply and strong demand. So that's what I spend every day doing is talking to builders and developers, talking to the property managers and finding out what's actually going on in the market to try and help the clients um, get their timing uh, right into the market. So though you're holding for a long term, we need to try and get you into the right market where values will at least hold or go up and where rents will hold or go up. So um, I hope it's been a really good education for you tonight. Thank you again to these wonderful presenters that have given up their time. And um, I think you can all agree um, it's been a fantastic education. So thank you very much to our presenters. And um, thanks, Garth. Thanks, for everyone. Sharing the information. Thank you very much. Eh? Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks, guys.